May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be ever pleasing in thy sight. I saw this on Facebook and I thought I'd share. <clears throat> Flight 2022 instructions. Good morning and welcome to Flight 2022. We are prepared to take off into the new year. Please make sure your positive attitude and gratitude are secured and locked in the upright position. All the self-destructive devices, pity, anger, selfishness, pride, and resentment should be turned off at this time. All negativity, hurt, discouragement should be put away. Should you lose your positive attitude under pressure during the flight, reach up and pull down a prayer. Prayer will automatically be activated by faith. Once your faith is activated, you can assist other passengers who are of little faith. There will be no baggage allowed on this flight. God, our co-captain, our captain, has cleared us for takeoff. Destination, greatness. Nothing is impossible with God. <clears throat> I felt this would be a good message to send out as we enter this new year, especially in lieu of many like myself who are making some New Year's resolutions, because with God, nothing is impossible. In the Bible, there are numerous examples proving that there is nothing impossible with God, including parting of the Red Sea, feeding the multitude, <clears throat> Lazarus from the dead. But I decided to narrow my choices to miraculous births. In Genesis 18, Abraham and Sarah are both in their 90s. They both thought that having a baby in their advanced years would be impossible. But in verse 10, they are told that they are going to have a baby and call him Isaac. Now Sarah laughs and thinks that this is a joke. But in verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time and you will have a son. And in the New Testament, Zechariah and Elizabeth are both in their senior years. They also thought that having a baby was an impossibility. But in Luke 1 verse 13, the angel says, you guys are going to have a baby. You shall call his name John, for nothing is impossible with God. However, the most amazing birth announcement came in verse 26. God sent Gabriel down to a 14-year-old teenage girl named Mary. The angel says, greetings. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. To be highly favored means to be especially chosen for gifts and blessings. A while back, there used to be a TV show called Extreme Makeover, Makeover Home Edition. <clears throat> they get this unsuspecting family that are in need and send them away, and when the family returns, they find the home of their dreams. Now, I'm not sure of all the criteria for being on the show, but each family is especially chosen to be in the program. So isn't that what God is doing for Mary? He's saying, I want you to be in the program. You are highly favored and I am with you simply because I love you. It's not because you worked or for it or earned it. I'm with you because I want to be with you and I have a special plan for your life. And God says the same things to us. In Ephesians it says that God's gifts are freely given. All you have to, to say is God come into my life. I'll make you my Lord and Savior. 
Isn't it wonderful to be highly favored? It means our sins are forgiven. It means that God has plans for our lives and nothing is impossible for God. I don't have to look too far for to find examples of God making the impossible possible. The first day of nursing school for me, my instructor came into our classroom and announced that if anyone in the class has a full-time job, there's no way you're going to make it through this nursing course. I had to work full-time. Of course, that instructor was not aware that I serve a God that sits high and looks low. I serve a God that can make a way out of no way. I serve a God that can not only turn up but turn out. So I prayed to God to give me the strength and determination to get through that course and prayerfully, God answered that request. Now Mary being blessed and highly favored meant that she was especially chosen for something extremely special. Now, I'm sure that part of her was thinking, why me? I'm a 14-year-old kid. I live at home. I'm still a virgin. Last I heard, you need a husband for that kind of thing. What could that angel be talking about? But in verse 37, the angel said, do not be afraid. Nothing is impossible with God. And although Mary questions, she responds in faith when she didn't fully understand everything. But aren't there times in our lives when we don't fully understand what God is doing? And what should our response be? We should respond by saying, I don't completely understand these things, but I know that God is always good. I will trust what I know to be true, God, even though I don't fully understand what he's up to. Just remember, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. Do you think your dreams are too big for God to bring to pass? Do you think your relationship is too far gone for God to restore? Do you think you have to live with that sickness the rest of your life? No, no, get a, get a new vision. God is saying, I am all powerful. I can turn any situation around. Nothing is impossible for God. Last fall, our choir sang a song entitled, On Time God. The song goes, he may not come when you want him, <clears throat> but he's always right on time. You think, you see, all things are possible with God, but all things may not be immediate with God. I heard a story of a man who speaks with God and asks, is it true that a million years is like a second to you? And God answers, yes, this is true. Then the man asks, is it true that a million dollars is like a penny to you? And God answers, yes, this is true. Finally, the man asks, can I have one of your pennies? And the Lord replies, sure, just one second. <clears throat> Martin Luther King's birthday was celebrated this past week. I believe he understood the concept of nothing being impossible with God. He dreamed of a world where people would not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. He was jailed numerous times and his house was firebombed, but he knew that the devil, what the devil meant for evil, God can turn it around for good. He was told numerous times that his quest for equality for all in the South was impossible. But he would believe deep in his heart that we shall overcome. And with this faith, he was able to dream of a world where all of God's people, white men and black men, Jews and Gentiles, Catholics and Protestants, will be able to hold hands 
and sing the words of that old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last, because nothing is impossible with God. But I also believe that Dr. King also understood the principle that things are not always immediate with God. In his final prophetic speech, he said, I have been to the mountaintop and I looked over and I have seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I have a cartoon in my office and it has a picture of Barack Obama making an inauguration speech with Martin Luther King is looking down from heaven and the caption reads, and I looked over and have seen the promised land. Nothing is impossible with God. Scripture says, God is effectually working in our lives and those who believe. Notice his power is activated only when we believe. I mean, sure, we might get a lucky break here and there, but when you truly believe, when you wake up, wake up expecting good things, you're really going to see God's favor. And when we have problems, we have to be, believe that God already has the answer. That child that won't do right, that financial problem, that illness, God already has the answer. He knows every difficulty we are going through. The good news is that God already has the answer. What does that mean? That, that means that we don't have to live our lives all worried. We don't have to be all stressed out. We need to have an attitude that I know that God is working on this problem. Not only will he bring me out, but he's going to bring me out better than before because nothing is impossible with God. You need to release your faith and to have a blessed and highly favored 2022. You may have had successes in the past, but I believe that God wants to take you to an even higher level this year. You may not see how it can happen, but just like the virgin birth, God has a way of making a way out of no way. And with this faith, instead of living for a dream, you be living your dreams and walking in the fullness of God's blessing. For nothing is impossible with God. Amen. I'm done.